Now we're going to finish this screencast with a case study. Uh, it's one of my favourites. It comes from somebody who is a friend of mine, Phil Gale, who works at the University of Sydney. Phil did his PhD with me many years ago. We worked in a lab pretty much next to each other. And like myself, Phil is interested in cystic fibrosis. And as I explained, cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease. And in the last screencast, we said chloride transport proteins have mutations because of the genetic mutation. And they cannot balance chloride levels, leading to a buildup of mucus around the cells, encouraging infection in the mucus, leading to lung damage and death. And one of the ways of addressing that is to try and build molecules that can transport chloride across cell membranes. Maybe one day they could replace the chloride transport proteins that are faulty in the patient. Now, this is a molecule that Phil and his team built to do just that. And we're going to walk through how it works, because although it's a tiny molecule, really, it's got this elegance to its design. You've got two NH groups here and here, and they form hydrogen bonds to a chloride ion, a pair of hydrogen bonds. So we have hydrogen bonding to chloride. And there's a trick that Phil's playing to make this binding even stronger. He's designed the molecule to have a phenolic group here that forms an intramolecular hydrogen bond to this carbonyl. So we have an intramolecular hydrogen bond. And what that does is it holds these arms in exactly the right position. So the NHs are pointing into the cavity. It stops those amides spinning the opposite way. It locks and pre-organizes the structure of this molecule. So we'll say it pre-organizes, locks the amide arms. And as we've explained before, that lowers the entropic cost of binding and that will make binding stronger. So you get this real rigidity. Now this system is of course based on hydrogen bonds. So it works best in organic solvents. Now let's think about the application that Phil and his team are interested in. They want to transport across a membrane. What is a membrane? Well, a membrane is an organic layer that sits between two aqueous compartments. It's got an apolar interior. So a molecule that's pre-organized to bind chloride in an organic medium might be just what we need. Here is a cartoon of a membrane. And you should remember that membranes have polar head groups, apolar tails, they stack together in bilayers. And the interior of this membrane is like... an organic solvent. So the receptor really wants to bind chloride in that environment, but it's not so keen on binding chloride in water. So here we've got a cartoon. This is the chloride binder. And importantly, it mostly stays in the membrane. It can carry Cl- through the membrane. Because it binds really strongly in that environment. And when it gets to the other side of the membrane, it releases Cl-. And the reason for that is binding is less strong in water. So we have a small molecule transport system that's been designed and optimised to work in the membrane environment. And what Phil and his team hope is that this kind of approach may develop 
as a chloride, rebalancing agent. Where you're unable to transport chloride across a cell and you get this unwanted gradient building up, a molecule like this could disperse that gradient, balance the chloride. Interestingly, what it can't do is build up a gradient, okay? It can disperse a gradient. It will always move to an equilibrium. It's not only taking the chloride one way, it takes the chloride both ways through the membrane and eventually you'll get the same concentration of chloride on each side. Now that's not what the body always wants. The body sometimes needs gradients of ions across membranes. So you'd have to couple this approach with some smart biochemistry or a chemical approach to allow your membranes to hold gradients as well. But controlling and understanding chloride transport across membranes lies at the heart of understanding and maybe treating in the future cystic fibrosis patients.